Hi, everyone. I want to start with a story. About 30 years ago, my grandmother, who lived in a small village in India, continued to refuse to lock the doors as she went to the neighbor's house. And this went on and on for years. And, and she insisted that she just didn't need it. it was, there was never anything that ever happened. Until one day, um, she came home and she had this big padlock. And uh, turned out the neighbor had had a burglary. And uh, she, from that day onwards, she insisted on using the padlock. She still kept the back door open for convenience, but, but that was a different story. <laughs> um, and it, it continues to be that today, most people who install a home security alarm, statistically speaking, either had their home burglarized th themselves or they know of someone um, who had that unfortunate experience. And sadly, that, that translates to the digital world. Most people who use antivirus software um, have had their identity or, or their account compromised in some way or they know of someone else and they go home and they, they go look for security. The, unfortunately, the parallel ends there. Um, because as you may imagine, as you can imagine, the, the harm done in a digital domain uh, unfortunately lasts uh, a long time and in, in some instances forever. If, if folks who've had their photos stolen or personal information stolen, uh, most of the times that information is going to be found on the internet um, forever. And, and even if you can um, go and, and get your finances in order and so forth, in most instances that, that will take for years. Whereas if you had something stolen from your home, you can, in most case, most instances, you can replace that relatively easily. So, so the impact has, has a much greater permanence uh, than you would imagine. So with that in mind, um, I wanted to say a couple of things about Avast. Uh, we are in 180 some countries. Uh, we operate in, uh, in 40, 46 different languages. And, and as John said, we have about 230 million users who, who give us a lot of insight around user behavior that often leads to uh, their, their digital information being compromised. And so what we do is often we speak with our users and we learn their behavior so that we can tailor our products to better protect them in the activities that they engage on. So the good news is 80% of the users that we speak with, that we spoke with, um, are concerned about their digital, um, digital assets being compromised or, or being victims of some form of a breach. So that's the good news and unfortunately that's where it ends. Because as concerned as they are, 40% don't lock their devices. So that's no different than leaving your door wide open as you leave for work in the morning. And, and, and so all, you have all your personal information on these devices and, and people don't lock it. 6% don't use secure passwords. Incidentally, 80% do think they use secure passwords, so that's a problem. Uh, and we define secure passwords as eight, eight digits um, uppercase, lowercase, uh, letters, and special character combinations. And then 40% of those people rarely change their password, not to mention use the same password over and over again. So now, imagine these are folks, 80% of them in all, are worried about, um, about their uh, digital privacy. So then what happens? You become a victim of a breach. You're notified by a service that your account was compromised. We're sorry. 60% of them never go back and change that password again. <laughs> you come home one day, you, you notice your lock got picked, your, your stuff got stolen, and what do you do? The first thing you do in our, in our physical life is you go to place the locks. But imagine 60% of the people who had their home burglarized or lock picked continue to go on uh, without uh, changing the locks. And don't even get me started on passwords. <laughs> so so you've, you've probably seen uh, this slide in various combinations and, and so forth. These are actual passwords um, that, that we received in a Wi-Fi database um, that, that, that we acquired. And, and these are router passwords. So router passwords, if you, uh, if you know, are even more critical because as you know, a few years ago, we had 
we had a uh, computer and then it was a laptop and a computer and then it was a laptop and a computer and a mobile device and, and now it's a wearable and then you know, as the Internet of Things catches on, you have your, your uh, baby monitors connected to your refrigerator, connected to your medicine cabinet, and, and all of those devices are connected through your home router, and your password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Imagine how, how vulnerable your internal network is. Um, and so, and, and this, this trend unfortunately continues beyond routers. Most people use very simplistic passwords, and, and there's been a lot said about analysis on recent breaches on passwords and so forth, and, and as was mentioned earlier, it's not just the protection for one service. People use the same password over and over again at other services, and so you might hear about one breach that happened, but what you don't hear about is the breaches that follow subsequently uh, because you use the same username and same passwords elsewhere. So mobile is becoming a very critical uh, part of this equation. Uh, we're already at a point where mobile shipments way outpace um, uh, outpace PCs, and as uh, the wearable, wearable technologies and IoT uh, catches on, um, this, this slide is already starting to look outdated. So what we see is we, we get about 280,000 users that we believe are affected daily across, uh, across our network. Um, most of those attacks or, or uh, malware attempts are thwarted. Uh, we get 12,000 samples, uh, unique samples of mal malware uh, daily across our systems. And what we've learned is there's about a 14% chance that you will encounter some unsavory experience, and that does not necessarily mean that you're infected. That just means that you got tricked or you witnessed a trickery where someone tried to give you a false warning that your phone is infected and you need to download this antivirus software now. We don't engage in that, of course. Um, and, and, and social engineering and so forth. Um, and so you encounter that, and, and worldwide average is about 14%. Uh, China mainland ends up being about 55%. Again, this is not the 50, you know, one out of two devices are infected. This is you encounter an experience that you were not expecting. And Hong Kong, we, we noticed that it's about, there's a 27% chance that you encounter um, one of these experiences. And the number of unique samples that we're, we're receiving is accumulating at an exponential pace. And that's worrisome. Because not only is the sophistication of attacks becoming better and better, uh, there are, there's a much, largest, uh, much larger uh, footprint uh, as the number of devices compounds uh, every year. So what are the top, some of the top malware threats that we've noticed on mobile? Uh, in 2015, we noticed SMS payment fraud. Uh, we noticed fake applications. We noticed applications that effectively exist just to steal your data and sell it to other parties, which can then take advantage of your personal information for, for um, nefarious purposes. Uh, we noticed a lot of ransomware. Um, and so in 2014, we noticed one of the first instances of a ransomware application that you install. It doesn't really do anything harmful for the first week or so. Um, and then it would encrypt your device and lock it unless you pay someone to, to unlock the device back and get access back to your information. Um, so as any good developer would, they updated their, their, the malware version uh, in 2015. And this year, and so in 2014, we were able to create uh, an uh, anti-malware application that allowed you to decrypt your device and get access back. This year, they became increasingly sophisticated and are using variable keys. So it is practically impossible for us to help you restore your device uh, once it's already been locked down. And that's worrisome. Um, additional uh, trends that we're seeing in 2016, um, looking forward, um, there's a lot of adware and malwaretisements where you download an application. Um, it's a game. It's got millions of positive reviews on Google Play Store. Uh, you play the game for a month, and a month later, um, it, it hijacks your phone and starts bombarding you with advertisements. Uh, it doesn't matter where you are, which application you're using. Uh, in that month, you've downloaded anywhere from five to 15 other applications. You have no idea which application is causing this, um, and, and you're in trouble. And then we're seeing a new trend of uh, applications that are increasingly um, taking, taking greater and greater privileges on your device. 
and now eventually they become um, the, the root on your device and they can, they can install any application, they can uninstall any application, they can send any information they want to anywhere, um, to any server on the planet, um, and that's a pretty scary threat. One of the good examples of that is um, these malwares that are taking advantage of these vulnerabilities. Uh, Certified Gate was a vulnerability. Uh, there was a malware called Kimoji that did essentially the same thing. It would, it would start accumulating privileges on your device until it became root, um, and then it has, um, it can practically has unlimited access to all your information and, and your network. Stage fright, uh, Kimoji affected, by the way, about 58%, 55 to 58% um, of Android users worldwide. Stage fright was another scare that, that got a lot, lot of press. Um, effectively, you receive a multimedia message from a friend. It's a video file, you play it, and, and now it's a, in, in reality, it was a piece of malware. It takes up all your contacts, multiplies itself, sends itself out to all your friends who experience the same behavior. This particular threat was, was impacting about 98% of the Android devices worldwide. Wi-Fi security, we ran an experiment where we walked the neighborhoods of a major metropolitan in Europe for about six and a half hours, and I'm not gonna say which one. Um, and so we, we, we effectively wanted to look at Wi-Fi data. And so we accumulated about 13,000 uh, Wi-Fi networks uh, in, a, in a period of about six hours. We noticed that about less than 8% actually supported WP encryption, which is sort of a, a, a reasonable standard to uh, aim for. Um, over 4,000 of them had no password and no encryption. So that effectively means that you're sitting there and any information you share could be, could be taken by anyone and, and all, the, all your traffic, your history, your keystrokes, et cetera, um, you're sharing that information with the world. And over 11,000 people that we identified in about six hours um, who, who were connected to these unprotected Wi-Fi's. So what about iOS? There is a, there is a perception that iOS is generally safe. Uh, that, is, that is somewhat true, except until um, a, a few months ago when, when we heard about um, a hacker group that, that released their own version of Xcode software that people use to develop iOS applications, um, that any time you unknowingly, a developer would uh, build an application using this particular variant of Xcode, uh, would inject a malware that went out to hundreds of millions of users, um, and you would think that these were not uh, developers who were building applications out of their homes. Uh, WeChat was one of the applications that was affected by that, and there's, there's a few users of WeChat, as we know. Um, and social engineering continues to be, be a problem, um, and as well as un connecting to unsecure uh, Wi-Fi networks using your iPhone uh, will, will keep you vulnerable. So our th threat detection is moving to machine learning. Um, there, are, there are antivirus soft, most advanced antivirus softwares are now moving to an area where um, it is difficult to, um, to look at these threats and analyze these threats by humans. Um, we have machine learning algorithms that effectively take samples uh, and compare them with our known database of malwares um, and automatically uh, flag um, troubling applications. We also signed a deal recently with uh, Qualcomm so we can look at processor level information and just take snapshots of processes that are running on uh, these devices and compare them to known malware samples. So it's becoming increasingly sophisticated. We get about a million requests a minute um, and that number is growing really fast. There are other utilities that we recommend people look at. Um, password managers are very important allows you to create compli complicated passwords, uh, remember them, uh, use a different password for different devices, um, and certainly VPN software that allows you to securely connect to open Wi-Fi networks. So that's our advice. Um, use safe passwords, change them often. Uh, don't use the same password for multiple services. Um, use some form of on-device security software that helps you uh, defend against these threats. Um, and if you were to connect to a public Wi-Fi, make sure you're connected securely. Thank you.